So I take a break for a couple of weeks just to refresh and get some time to myself and then I come back and scroll through my For You page on TikTok and for some weird reason, what we're doing now is hating on art styles that look good and calling them toxic and then trying to cancel artists who draw in that art style. I think it has finally come to the point where they need to throw away TikTok and the entire art community along with it. Hey how's it going and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the popular jelly art style which has unanimously become the most hated art style in the art community on TikTok. The jelly art style has been causing a whole lot of drama this past couple of days and getting people to express how much pent up hate they have stored in their bodies deep down for this art style. Reading some of these comments just made me wonder, how do you even have time to consider hating on an art style? I dislike the jelly art style, it looks so odd. Jelly art style is so overrated and I never liked it to be honest. I am an avid hater of the jelly art style. That shit does not look as good as everyone says it does. It's just an art style. You guys are taking it a little too seriously in my opinion. At this point I think it's safe to assume that artists are no longer allowed to draw whatever they enjoy or make art that is true to themselves anymore. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner artist, young, old or ancient artist. As long as you happen to share your art on social media, there's always going to be a group of people who will carefully rip your work apart and nitpick until they find something problematic about your work. Anyway, if you're new to this channel and love listening to art commentary style videos or just videos talking about the art community in general, please subscribe to the channel and join the discord using the link in the description. So for those of you who are wondering what even is a jelly art style, well, the jelly art style is nothing short of unique according to TikTok and its user base who have seemed to cancel that art style and also every artist who draws in that art style after literally liking the art style a couple of months ago before all this drama started. The jelly art style has always been around and is pretty commonly used by a number of artists on Instagram and Twitter and it's mainly characterized by its slightly bright but muted color palette and an excessive amount of blush around the cheeks, eyes and noses of the characters and the lips are full and painted softly with lots of glossy highlights across them to make them very expressive and for lack of a better word, juicy. Now out of all these aforementioned features of the jelly art style, the features that stand out the most and make people want to gorge out their eyes every time they see another jelly art style post on their timeline is the eyes. The eyes in every jelly art style post I've seen are always so intriguing. For the most part they are rather larger than the other features of the face which further sets them apart and makes them stand out jarringly with either a troubled expression in them or a soulless emotionless look as if they are staring into your mind and judging you for all the mistakes you have made in your life. Another thing that makes them stand out is just the sheer amount of catch lights and glitter artists tend to add in them and I'm assuming that is understandable because just like every other artist, I myself also happen to have an unhealthy addiction to adding unnecessary highlights in the eyes even if they don't make any sense aside from making the drawing look a tad bit cooler. The characters drawn with the jelly art style range from goth girls to our regular Pinterest cute girls but there's always a rather excessive need for giving these characters piercings and accessories that make the drawings look edgy and cool. You basically can't call your art jelly art if your character doesn't have a septum piercing and a number of other weirdly placed facial piercings just to make them look interesting for the most part. The jelly art style has always been popular on other social media platforms and as TikTok started growing and increasing its user base, some of these artists slowly transitioned onto TikTok and started posting their work on there. And at the beginning before all this drama started, new young and impressionable artists saw this art style and immediately became attracted to it and wanted to learn it and in the long run, gradually adopt it into their process. But we all know how that ends up in the art community 
community. Anytime an artist or a group of artists stumble on a technique that happens to be appealing to the young audience, they either start gatekeeping it or calling other people who try to draw in that technique tracers or art thieves or both of them if the shoe fits evenly. And this has been a common occurrence in the art community both on Twitter and TikTok. A TikTok artist who goes by Purika, who we're going to refer to as Riri for the rest of this video, and is known for heavily spearheading the jelly art style movement on TikTok with almost 300,000 followers on their TikTok account and multiple drawing tips and tutorial videos for their audience of people interested in learning the jelly art style to follow and use as inspiration so they can develop their own art style and technique, happened to be in the center of the drama a couple of weeks ago when they started getting called out and attacked by other artists in the TikTok art community for a situation that happened recently. Riri, I believe, made a draw this in your style challenge for their followers to draw their their OC in their own technique and I believe one of their followers made a drawing that looked almost identical to one of Riri's drawings with similar facial features and rendering style which is to be expected since Riri themselves have videos of them teaching others how to reach a similar level of rendering in their work and kind of make their drawings look slightly similar in style and choice of color. So Riri apparently made a video about the situation calling the young artist out for tracing their work which then garnered a lot of views and had people attacking the young artist for tracing, which is just something that always happens in the art community. Whenever a bigger artist talks about the situation, there's always people who are going to take their love for the said artist a little too far to the point where they start to attack the accused younger artist because they don't have enough followers and people who can stand up for them and defend them in this situation, and they sadly don't particularly have a platform for them to defend themselves. Now, I'm not using this as a form of idolizing art theft or saying tracing or copying another artist's work directly is right, but I believe as an artist with an exceptionally large amount of followers, it is crucial to understand that a big number of people following you are not just following you because they like cats, grapefruit, and Fortnite in no specific order, they are literally following you because they like your art, and something particular about your art style is attractive to them, and whether you like it or not, a good number of them are going to copy your work for inspiration and quote unquote steal your technique and stylistic choices. It's just how inspiration and art styles work. And then it's left for the younger artists to learn other techniques and take in more inspiration till eventually they happen to find a style that works for them and their art. So apparently the younger artists had also posted a video of their process for the image which showed that they were not tracing any of Riri's work and they mostly just relied on using Riri's work as inspiration and heavily referencing their art which is understandable since they're still young and learning before they can eventually establish their own art style. Now I'm not saying for every young artist to just go out there and copy every artist that inspires them but try to learn techniques from them and use that as a stepping stone to develop your own art style. Add your own spin on it, your own flair, add things you like that are unique to you and gradually you develop your own style and you can begin to make tutorials about it and also get mad when other beginner artists try to learn from you. And then this curse never ending cycle repeats itself again. Now before we move on to the next part of this video, let me tell you briefly about the sponsor of today's video. Note. If you're an artist just like me or a creative person in general, I'm sure you've been in situations where you have so many images and pictures you're going to use as references and you just wish you could organize them and have them all in one place where you could access them easily. And that is precisely where Note comes in. Note is an interactive tool that helps you organize all the different files for your projects on one platform so accessing them can be easier. You can collect pictures, videos, notes and text and rearrange them into different boards using any of the templates that suits your specific needs. You can also create tasks to keep yourself disciplined and hold yourself accountable if you start procrastinating instead of finishing a task. I definitely wrote that one for myself. Using Note for organizing your project is pretty easy. I like to start by creating a general board where I lay out a broad overview that covers everything concerning the project I'm about to work on. Then I move on to place my references in a sub board and my lighting cues in a separate board so I know where to find each of them. I like to use Note's web clipper tool when gathering screenshots from movies that have interesting lighting and color and then saving any image or screenshots in the board. And then I make a small to-do list with all the tasks I need to accomplish and finalize the project by giving it a description. 
just in case I forget. And this is great for when you're collaborating with other artists on the same image. So everyone has an idea of what the project is about and has access to the same references since everything is properly organized in the same place. The kind folks at Milanote are giving free access with no time limit to everyone who signs up for a free account using the link in the description. So head over to milanote.com slash Mohamed Agbadi to try it out for free with no time limit. All the links will be in the description and a big thank you to Milanote for sponsoring this video. Video. Well, at this point, we all know how the internet is. Everyone rushed out to cancel Riri for what they did and mock their art style, calling them names and whatnot. And I think that although Riri could have handled the situation differently just for the sake of the younger artist's privacy, I don't think it warrants the entire art community trying to cancel them for standing up for their work. Could it have been a wrong call out since the image wasn't directly traced? Probably. Could they have handled the situation differently and not made a video to drag the artist? Absolutely. But I still don't think it's enough to cancel them for what they did. Even if they wanted to cancel anyone, start with the people who went to the comments and started attacking the young artist for no reason. Address those people first before you then try to cancel an artist that has already stated in their profile they don't want other people copying or tracing their work for reference. And just before people take my words out of context, let me iterate it again. I don't condone what Riri did to the artist. I would have totally handled it in a different manner, but I still don't think it's cool trying to cancel Riri for that. Other artists left comments regarding the situation on TikTok and most of them kinda had a lot to say. I just dislike her because of the way she acts. She is immature. Calling a pedo and racist and calling them white when they're not. I'm pretty sure sending a hate mob after a kid twice, making false pedophilic allegations over criticism and telling someone to off themselves does. She literally has history of doing this to small artists and she tells people to off themselves like it's something normal so often because they do something she dislikes. I don't know why she can't just either ignore it or address something the mature way considering she's 18. I mean, if Riri has a history of doing this to younger artists, then I feel like they should just try to stop associating themselves with Riri and their art since they probably know the outcome and they possibly can't change Riri's behavior about it. So best is just to stay clear of copying their work for your own mental health. I'm really concerned about how happy the people cancelling her right now are. It's like they've been waiting for her to do something wrong. I think it's safe to say that the main form of entertainment on the internet now is cancelling others or watching them fall off and waiting for downfall videos explaining what happened to them. It's just become a culture on YouTube at this point. Take this video for example. You're watching it now, aren't you? That explains my point. She still owes a full-fledged apology to that kid. Imagine sending an entire fan base after them and saying you will do it again and also claiming the kid was a pedo or something like that. Please get a grip. Speaking of apology videos and getting a grip, Riri did find some time to make an apology video addressing the situation on their TikTok account. My apology video plus explanation. Psych! <laughs> So there's a screenshot about me circulating on TikTok right now. Pause to read. First of all, I don't even use Discord anymore. I only use it to buy Spotify Premium and Netflix Premium illegally. This is my actual Discord account that haven't been opened in weeks. And if you've been in Artsiverse, you can literally see me post my art there. And this, I don't even know what FFS means until I search it up on Google. Like, I don't know slangs like that in English. And next time you're gonna spread rumors about me, at least make it realistic. I, li I literally can speak English straight. Also, I'm not forcing anyone to support me. If you want to support me or not, that's on you. I'm just here to make tutorials and post my art. That's it. Bye. Thank you for listening. Man, what the fuck is you what talking about? What the fuck about, was man? that? No, I'm sorry, bro. No, I wasn't thinking about it. When I did it, I, I should have said, like, Bird King. So, yeah. I know the people considering Riri are going to have a field day with this one because this was probably not the apology video they were expecting. A lot of Riri's fans supported their decision and were mad people were still trying to cancel Riri while some others literally had no clue all this drama was even going on at this point. But the main question I kept on seeing pop up over and over again were people asking why Riri was making tutorials teaching people how to draw in their style 
but then getting mad when people actually started drawing exactly like them? Which is a very good question, thanks for asking. Because I myself have often wondered the mystery behind this elusive topic. Why do artists get mad when other artists copy their work? I think the answer to this question is probably going to be different from individual to individual. But if you ask me, I, for one, have no problem with other artists learning from a technique I'm showing and then getting better at it and using it as their main. Some artists might find a problem with it because if one, two or three artists are all drawing in the same style, then it begins to become hard to differentiate the artist from each other, especially if all the drawings look really similar and have the same subject matter, which for the most part is Pinterest girls, let's not kid ourselves here. I also feel another reason may be because it kinda becomes competitive for the artists mostly when it comes to getting work and commissions because when all of the styles are really similar a commissioner might go to one artist and if that artist rates are way out of their budget they could just go to another artist who draws in a really similar manner but has cheaper rates because maybe they're just inexperienced or they're new to commissions and don't really know how to value their work so you see how this might pose as a little problem for the artists in my opinion i think both riri and the artists who heavily refer their work are at fault at various degrees and all this could have been avoided if the artist just took some inspiration from Riri and then went off with it. But I believe they're still young so you can't entirely blame them for wanting to draw exactly like their favorite artists or produce art similar to that. So moving forward I hope other young artists see this situation and learn from it so they don't happen to fall into drama similar to this and have an entire server come for their art just because they tried to draw like an artist they admire. Even after the satirical apology video and everything, it seems most of the people in the art community are still mad at Riri and there are still more videos being posted to TikTok by artists validating the younger artists and trying to explain to Riri why what they did was wrong. Riri is genuinely disgusting. Your whole ass adult being proud of your fans harassing a literal child. What if the poor kid does something bad? What's worse is Riri is my age and acting this childish. The problems of having a large fan base. People are most likely if not always immature. Sorry man but anyone who gets a kid banned from TikTok just for drawing in their style deserves all harassment. Poor kid's passion is probably killed. I just hope the kid can still stay motivated after all of this because the internet can be pretty weird and people might still come back after all this has died down just to harass them for the fun of it. Which is just a bad and terrible thing to do. Please don't do that. I predicted this issue since every piece in this style is so extremely similar because many people who use this style follow instructions without understanding why and knowing basic anatomy rules. I mean I guess that's why everyone just hates the jelly art style and says it's overrated and overused because almost everyone on TikTok is either using that same art style or a variation of it. Even people who are still learning art and really don't understand how to draw perfect anatomy. But anyway, I think the style is great. I think the artists who use it and understand how to draw good anatomy are great. And everyone should just get along with each other and stop all this nonsense of hating an art style or just shaming others for their work and how they draw their work. It's just art, man. Like, let people enjoy drawing what they like to draw. If you don't enjoy the jelly art style, that's fine. Let people who enjoy it, enjoy it in peace. Don't just try to cancel them because of what one artist did or what the entire art community is saying. The art community is meant to be a fun place where people can show their work and get feedback from each other, not get cancelled because their drawings have one too many highlights in the eyes or too much blush and piercings. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, share it with one friend who hates the jelly art style and share it to the other person who draws in the jelly art style and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. With all that being said, I'll see all you pretty penguins in the next video. Bye.